Yeah, Louise Calvin, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Um, we just need to talk about this, really. Uh, what what has gone wrong with Munster? Because we like last week, certainly, I got suckered into the emotion of the week for CJ and Billy Holland and the quality of the performance within the Six Nations, and it felt like they were going to be able to ride that and produce a big physical performance, but they didn't. Yeah, I think anyone who's supporting Munster at the weekend would have found the whole game pretty deflating, to be honest, um, which is very disappointing. I think coming back off the Munster Leinster game in the Home Park in January, we were all very um, excited for what was coming ahead. And uh, look, it's been spoken about to death that Munster picked the strongest team we had available to us. Leinster maybe with one eye on the Champions Cup this weekend. And just the need, the need for Munster to win a, a trophy for the first time in 10 years versus um, Leinster's need to win another Pro 14 where really their shortcomings have been more in Europe in the last few years. Um, that very much it was, you know, Munster have to put in a huge performance here and have to get a win. And not only did we not get the win, but we didn't get anywhere near the performance that we would have expected from the team. Any idea why? Like, you know, Leinster are a, a very clinical, very powerful, um, very all-encompassing team. And Munster, I, I certainly think we're behind them at the moment. Um, and what we probably would have relied on in previous years would have been, you know, this huge energy surge and a real emotional performance to try and get up to the to the pitch. That didn't happen. We certainly weren't at the races um, from an, a, an intensity and an emotional point of view. Why? Um, I suppose I'm asking myself, like a lot of those players would have, a lot of the, the I suppose, the key driving forces, the likes of um, CJ Stander, um, Keith Earls, a lot of these guys, they did that last weekend, the form guys that we were looking at, like Ty Byrne obviously had an incredible Six Nations, but he just looked absolutely fatigued and, and flat relative to his performances in the Six Nations last weekend. So when you rely on that level of um, emotion to perform, you can't do that week in, week out. And they expended that against England last weekend. You, you need more than that. Whereas the Leinster guys who would have been stepping back into the fold, they didn't need, you know, they were stepping into a more complete team um, with more, I suppose, leaders and foreign players probably in around them versus the Irish guys coming back who were probably expected to do more within that Munster setup than the Leinster guys coming back, if that would have made sense. Take, for example, someone like Hugo Keenan. He would just be coming back in to play the same role he did against Ireland. He wouldn't be expected to come back in and exactly lift those around him. Maybe that's the one reason why um, why Munster weren't able to get up to the level of performance that we that we expected from them. Um, maybe another few key areas, like we all have been putting a lot of pressure, or we've been extremely excited to see Joey back on the pitch. But and I know even on here um, a few times over the near the end of the Six Nations, it was a question whether he'd be catapulted into the Irish squad, and I certainly didn't think so because. Like when you're out for that long and even take, for example, he didn't just, he didn't have two years back to back and then all of a sudden do a cruciate. Joey had a sustained period of injury going back probably two, three seasons at this stage. So he was even at, you know, when we weren't getting front football, he wasn't able, he wasn't able to get a, um, a grasp of the game. And, you know, once or twice, I just thought he was one or two seconds behind the plate just because he's, he needs he probably needs to come into a very settled um, I suppose, team performance where he can start to grow in confidence and exert pressure on the game instead of a constantly retreating pack. And I think we had 36% possession as well. So there's there's no one reason, but there's a, a few reasons together. And then psychologically, we're just, as well as physically and tactically and technically, we have been beaten by Leinster, I think, on six occasions on their own now. And, um, you know, it, we just never looked like we were getting to the pace of the game at all on, on, um, at the weekend. And actually, the scoreline flattered Munster in the end. Is there a sense that even a, a fully fit and firing Joey Carberry, who'd been playing for the full season, wouldn't have actually made that much of a difference on Saturday anyway? Because, as you say, they got beaten up, up front. Absolutely. I mean, you can't play off of 36% possession unless you're playing, well, you can't anyway, but unless you're playing serious territory. And we weren't either. We were constantly getting breached with a huge amount of missed tackles. Um, I mean, it was twice we had Leinster up over the line in, in that opening 40 minutes. So the scramble defence, you know, that kind of, um, I suppose, intensity that Munster bring when they don't want their line to be crossed, that was still there. 
but it puts you under too much pressure. Like time and time again, we saw just outside Dale Andy's channel getting broken. Um, and, you know, you could simply look at it and say, oh, um, Henshaw is getting Dale Andy, but obviously defence is getting quite narrow that everyone is getting stepping quite quite far in because we're afraid of our our um, our line being breached again and then we're, we're losing that line integrity. When you do when you lose line integrity, you can't get any line speed. You can't start to impose your defensive um, game on the opposition. So yeah, fully fit Joey Carberry wouldn't have made a huge amount of difference when you're not getting um, possession or territory. So what do you do in that situation tactically then, Louise? You touch on territory there, but Johan van Graan would have realised that Leinster had a big advantage in the front five going into Saturday's game. Yeah, and I think coming into half time, Johan said himself, like I think he was asked himself in his interview, what did you what did you want to do at half time? You're coming in at six all, but you really don't deserve to be coming in at six all and you haven't really fired a shot. You don't have a massive foothold in the game. And at the same time we could have gone in nine, twelve, six only for the, the missed kicks, particularly Carberry's off the post. Um so you try and get you start to you try and build a few phases and try and get some territory um into the into the Leinster half, but it just it wasn't happening. And again, you have the front five battle of which you're clearly you losing. And all of a sudden you see Ty Byrne coming off the bench. Um, and you know, he's only gonna put more and more pressure on our scrum. We don't have, you know, we're not we're not winning that battle and then they bring it on, you know, a line onto the field who um who's who's incredible form and isn't fatigued because he hasn't exactly played a full um Six Nations either. So again, it's 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 just incredibly difficult. Um I don't think we have the same caliber of player throughout the field and the same depth at the moment as Leinster but at the same time it is very disappointing just the manner of the loss and not the scoreline just the, the manner of the loss against Sunday I think it's quite deflating and we really want to see Munster um, put up a huge performance against um, against Toulouse this weekend to try and I suppose win back some some belief and some some credibility credibility and some pride as well. Is there a question mark around what the identity of the team is at the moment that it's still a little bit unclear about what they're trying to do or is that an unfair question after coming up against a team like Leinster because you know like when Ireland got hammered by England we didn't really know this is a couple of seasons back over the last two years when Ireland were getting routinely hammered by England when Leinster were being beaten by Saracens there were significant questions there about what the team was trying to do but ultimately in a fight if you get squashed by a bigger team it's very hard for you to do very much. Yeah, and listen, it's one game. Munster have had a fairly, um, pretty decent season up to this this point. Um, they've, as Keith said in the, in the soundbite there, they've they've blooded a lot of players um, and given a lot of experience to guys. But I suppose yeah, the identity. I think look, Munster obviously incredibly successful um, prior to I suppose Leinster coming on board and becoming dominant. And we we kind of said, look, the game is evolving. We can't just batter it up one man carries and rely on on aggression and and pride um, and that almost a stand up and fight mentality. And you know, in fairness to Monster, they increased the resources and um, they increased the they changed the co coaching ticket around, um, brought in the likes of Stephen Larkham and. But at, on Sunday, we didn't. We saw neither really. We didn't see um, a brilliant game plan where we were going to play to a lot of width. Um, I felt we were very deep whenever we did get any chance to attack, um, and yet at the same time, that real man up kind of aggression in your face. We were losing that battle as well, which is very un monster like. But that is one game, um, and the best thing about I suppose, the best thing for Munster is, although it's a huge, huge task. They have um, they have a game again this weekend and a good performance and you know a win against Toulouse and all of a sudden um, you're into the top eight. I, I don't see us winning the European Cup, but still it would it would change the outlook of the season. And I think again it's the performance and maybe if the if the fans can see what what Munster are trying to do and if we can bring some of that old identity of um, doggedness and toughness and I suppose that that energy and that intensity around the battle and around the, the that front five, front eight contest, um, as well as maybe a little bit of, okay, what are we trying to do from an attack point of view that we've seen at times throughout the Pro 14 this year, um, then I think we'd, you know, that the scorecard would be a bit different on the managing, management ticket. That's the thing, it's a huge game, isn't it? Like a, a massive amount rides on this because if they were to win this game, for example, this weekend, then you can look back and say, 
maybe they managed the emotional pitch all wrong in the build-up. Maybe there was too much talk about Billy and too much talk about CJ and they got inside their own heads and what they should have been thinking about was the fact that they haven't beaten Leinster in five games and this team is going to squash them if they're not ready for it. Or if, you know, There's definitely retrospectively, but if they get beaten and they, and they are as flat against Toulouse as they were last week, well then, serious question marks about how prepared they are mentally, how prepared they are physically, what the game plan is. Those questions, and it's going to be a long, long period of time before they get the opportunity to answer them properly because for all the importance of the Rainbow Cup, like it's not, it's not a tournament that anybody yet has any emotional attachment to. Yeah, and I think, look, obviously it's a huge, it's a short turnaround. Um, Peter Mahoney, who's had such a, I suppose, a, a broken up season between suspensions and now he's, he's potentially going to have, um, potentially not going to be able to play with an injury. And, you know, he probably didn't enforce himself as much as he would have liked to when he was on the field um, against Leinster. He, but if he is missing, that's obviously a huge loss as well. Um, I think Munster this week, they can't be, I suppose, motivated by fear, the fear of putting in the same performance again. And at the same time, outcome isn't, you know, you don't want to focus too much on outcome against a team like Toulouse, but just the process of, okay, if what we are about, what is our identity, what is our game plan, and trying to marry the two. And, like, I don't think um, physic in terms of the, the strength conditioning side of things or the physicality that they have their disposable disposal that's not going to find wanting it's um it's it's nearly more that psychological element of getting up for the game and trying to pose their their game on to lose who are obviously littered with anton dupont um into mac and then of course ches and colby it's it's going to be a huge battle but if they're going to play 36 percent possession against even just the three of those players well it could be a bloodbath yeah and I guess the questions around the coaching staff, fairly or unfairly, are always going to focus on, on the head coach, especially in this case, Louise, when there is a certain legend of the province who is doing such good things as a head coach with La Rochelle at the moment. How real do you think the talk around Ronan O'Gara to Munster would become if Munster end up crashing out in the next couple of rounds here? Yeah, look, Roger's doing a phenomenal job and he, he took himself away and he, he's travelled around the world coaching. Now he's gone to France, he's in New Zealand, he's back. He's doing a brilliant job at La Rochelle. Um, I suppose the other question is, he, he's going so well. I'm sure at some stage coming back to Munster is is a, is something that he would uh, he wants to do. But would he come back next season with, um, you know, we're going to lose CJ. Um, with a team that are, are struggling mentally and to, I suppose, that are top of the rest. But when it comes to the real crux of, of winning cup rugby, whether it be Pro 14 finals or Champions Cup or, or off the pace, I'm not sure if, if Raj wants to jump straight away into that. Maybe he does. Um, but you can be damn sure there'll be those sort of calls we, um, will be starting to circulate if we don't get a performance this weekend. I think that's what's important. It's, it's not necessarily even the win because of who we're playing, but it's it's the performance that we're we're looking for. Um, and look, we've brought in Graham Groundtree and and Larkin. We haven't given him that much time yet, so if, to throw him out within one season will be, um, would, you know, we'd lack continuity as well at that stage if it was a complete change in the coaching ticket. Um, I think it's more about the players on the pitch now to to perform come come the weekend, come Saturday. Because if you, uh, I guess, remove the head coach, you're, there's a good chance you're taking away all the structures he's put in place as well. And I guess the, the investment that Munster have made, like there is a case to be made on that front then that there is, I guess, a, another season to be persisted with here. Like I, I, it does come down to what happens over these next few weeks, of course. But do you think that there is a case where Van Gran is fighting for his life at Munster here for, for his role as head coach at, at Munster over these next few weeks. Yeah, look, I suppose listening, I don't think he's on the edge of his seat as much as um, Stephen Kenny listened to, to you chatting before. And, but uh, it, it, as Keith Wood used a good word in terms of vulnerable. At the same time, look, he's been here since 2017. That was his first final. Um, again, because we lose to Leinster in the semi-final last year. Um, it's the same. It is the same story. We're looking for a change. And again, it's it's Losing to Leinster in a Pro 14 final isn't necessarily a disaster. Um, it's the manner in which the game went at the weekend and that level of deflation. You could just feel it from the first minute and when we're driven into touch throughout the game when you're holding on by the skin of your teeth to just keep um, to keep a, a, like a, a close margin on the scoreboard. It's, it's the manner in which 
the defeat happened at the weekend versus the actual defeat itself because Leinster are a phenomenal team and we are off the pace when it comes to playing against them and what they've created. Um, Europe then because of that if you're not winning your you almost your I know it's not domestic but almost like your domestic league then winning a European championship becomes an even taller task um so is there progress Some, sometimes you can have progress without there being um without usurping your your main contenders and that's what we're trying to figure out has there been progress and at the weekend there certainly looks like there's been a step back but I think we can all see there was it wasn't a fair reflection of Johan van Kran's, um, I suppose, tenure at the moment. So what we're looking to see is how he responds this weekend and how the squad responds. The news came in the last 24 hours or so that they are signing a, a giant South African, Jason Jenkins, who's um, six foot seven, who's a second row, who might add. So if you have him and Snyman, and obviously uh, there are uh, some existing second rows there who I'm sure will be... Uh, eyeing up their own place going, this is very interesting, we're signing somebody at, at this quality. But so he's essentially a replacement for Billy Holland. Um, but you would hope that he's going to force his way into the first team. Uh, and a full year with Snyman playing to see what impact he has on the rest of the squad as well and how that improves the front row. Like, I, I guess people are calling for calm and calling for, you know, the, give the coaching ticket time, let the new full coaching ticket have its influence be shown mm. with a fully fit Joey Carberry with a full preseason behind him as well? Yeah, look, I think what we're hoping is that last weekend was a massive blot in the paper and that they learn a huge amount from it in terms of if they have a final again, which hopefully Munster will in the not too distant future, how they get up to the pitch that game. Um, maybe there was, sense, there was a sense of the the squad players that when the international guys came back in, they were going to give it a massive lift, especially with some of the form those guys were bringing. But we could see they were emotionally exhausted, particularly from what they expended the week before. So there's probably a few learning um, learning points from that. Um, but yeah, if you have guys who are not going to be heading off international duty, the likes of Jenkins and it's name and playing, um, I think Dialande in general has been obviously a positive influence, but the weekend wasn't his best performance. Whether that was because of defensive frailties inside him that maybe exposed um, exposed him more so. But a few of these guys playing week in, week out, and the power that they can bring. Because again, that's like when you look at the likes of Ronan Kedher bursting onto the ball, we don't have, you know, say for Kilcoin, who is probably at that that burst of pace but again we don't have that burst of pace in our in our front five but if you're bringing a lot more power the likes of the South Africans but again they, they have to blend in obviously someone like CJ is a brilliant example of someone who's um who's done quite well but you know not every um not every player we bring in from uh, international waters has the same influence or has even a, a similar influence from a domestic point of view so hopefully this guy is um is, is going to bring a bit more power and ballast nearly to that Munster front five because we certainly were lacking it at the weekend. One last question then. Um, we'll talk a good bit more about Leinster later on in the week in, in preview of their game on Friday against Toulon. Where are they at the moment in, in terms of the European pecking order? Like, For them, winning a league title the fourth in a row is obviously important and it's great for that squad, but ultimately they're going to be judged and they're going to judge themselves on whether or not they're lifting the European Cup this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they'll look at the weekend and pick out a lot of learnings as well. Um, they were not very clinical at all, um, which was on, on Leinster-like, and they really should have had that game. Um, they should have had a 10-point lead by half-time and, and have built on that by the second half. At the same time, it's a sign of a good team that when you're not converting and the last pass is going astray, you still comprehensively, if not on the scoreboard, but in the the um, tackling and possession stats that you comprehensively I suppose, out, you know, wrestle the game away from the opposition is still the sign of a good team as well. But look, they're uh, what's a bit worrying coming into the weekend is, um, or maybe not worrying, it, it, there's an opportunity potentially for Harry Byrne there from what we're listening to reports that Johnny Sexton and Ross Byrne could both be sidelined through injury. But absolutely, Leinster are going to be um, judging their season and whether it's um, successful or not on winning the Champions Cup, um, which they've, you know, come um, underfoot or, or stuck in the last few seasons um, and what they have, what what a huge challenge I think for Leo Cullen now is figuring out who's best 15 is because, you know, he's such squad depth and, um, you know, there's always been a few players injured for the Kane and Doris and James Ryan are going to be out for too long. We know at the weekend, but should they all become available, 
who actually is he starting 15 or starting 23 is um a huge question might depend on who they're playing on the day and a few positional changes but um you know, they have such depth and it's not a bad headache to have i guess for for leo cullen and Stuart lancaster no and it's interesting how different their view on who should start is from who the ireland selectors think should be starting that's another debate for another day louise good stuff thanks a million for joining us this morning cheers thanks guys